Hey guys, this is Miles Hisher from High View Solutions, a Google Cloud partner, here with a first look at the Google Sheet G Suite admin console. So we'll start with an overview of user management, then we'll talk about application management, we'll move on to reporting and alerts, mobile device management, and conclude with an overview of security. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So when I say Google G Suite, I'm talking about the Google Apps for Work product family, including the communication tool set with Gmail, Google Hangouts and Chat, Google Calendar, Google Plus. On the collaboration front, we have Google Drive for store, storage and sharing. You also have the collaboration tool set with Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms, and Google Sites. To top it all off within G Suite, you have the administration controls specifically the Google Admin Console plus Google Vault. Uh, the focus of today's first look is the Google G Suite Admin Console, but we do have some other videos available which dive into some of the other products that I'm displaying here at the moment. So let's go ahead and pull up our Admin Console on a demo G Suite instance and get started with just a quick tour um, of the Admin Console as you first log in. Great. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is, is just go through the interface. So on the top left-hand corner, you have a series of navigation links, which, uh, which allow you to more quickly find what you're looking for. You can also use the search bar at the top to pinpoint information, such as spam controls in Gmail. Further to the right, you have a task um, icon indicating any ongoing tasks that you're running, such as importing data from other mail systems. And then further to the right, you have access to the uh, G Suite Help Center directly within the Admin Console, which is great. I want to start by going into the Users tab and talking about user management and OUs, which we call organization units. So from the Users panel, you can simply create a new user individually or bulk upload users um, for users that you've already created. You can perform simple tasks from here, such as resetting passwords, renaming a user, or from this drop-down, you could quickly add to a specific group, suspend, delete uh, a user entirely. Uh, you could also drill into a specific user uh, to view their entire profile, such as security, do they have two-step verification enabled, what groups they are a part of, admin roles you've granted, devices they're logged into, such as a mobile device, uh, and team drives that they are a part of. Within user management, you could group users into organizational units, uh, which we nickname OUs. So organizational units could be used to manage um, different levels of access to Google G Suite applications. So a great example of this would be, let's say you have several contractors that are doing work for you, and you only want them to have an email address. They don't need access to Google Drive you could place those users into the contractor's organization unit and then disable the entire Google Drive service for those members. So organizational units can be quite flexible, but keep in mind this is solely a way to administer users on the back end. It's not a, um, it's not a employee facing product like Google Groups where people will email a organization unit, for instance. Um, also, if you are working in an exchange environment today or running Active Directory or some other LDAP service, um, you can set up Google Cloud Directory Sync, uh, which will allow you to push data from your um, LDAP provider like Active Directory into Google G Suite. So you could push your groups as well as users, um, so that way you're not creating users in, in multiple locations. And that product's called Google Cloud Directory Sync. Moving on from user management, you have company profile. So you under company profile, you could upload a photo of your organization to show without throughout the Google G Suite um, admin consoles. You could set up um, and sign a BAA agreement if you're a healthcare organization and want to be HIPAA compliant within Google Drive and some other general information about your company. Uh, I'm gonna skip over billing at the moment and go to reports. So reports, 
allow you to run um, a variety of helpful um, uh, summaries of how Google G Suite is being used at your organization. So you could drill in by specific application. You have this highlights tab. Um, further down, you could take a look at how mobile devices are in use. You can drill in by users. And then for G Suite Business and Enterprise, you have more granular audit controls, such as drilling into the drive audit log. So you can see who has access to particular files and when. You could also set up alerts. So you could set up certain queries and then set alerts when those queries are met. An example would be anytime files with a particular name are shared externally, for instance. And at the very bottom, you'll see this option to manage some of the more common alerts that you as a systems admin probably want to be uh, aware of. So if a user's admin privileges are revoked, um, if a suspended user is made active, so on and so forth, suspicious activity, um, apps outage, if there's a problem with Google services, etc. Great. Moving on from reports, you have apps. So within applications, um, you will manage access to 14 core G Suite services, and you also have the ability to manage access with your um, 46 other Google services that, that Google has. This could be everything from YouTube to AdWords, et cetera. Um, the primary way I like to explain this is, um, let's say you have an employee who wants to upload a personal political rant on YouTube you don't want him using his work email account. So you might want to limit um, how YouTube can be used with his at your domain account. Uh, maybe restrict it entirely so that way he has to use his personal email or a Gmail account that he creates separately for, for, the, for that video. So you could restrict and monitor access for those 46 other non-Core G Suite apps. Within the Core G Suite apps, you could drill into specific settings by service from calendar to directory, certain settings for Gmail, et cetera. And you'll see here, the current service status is on for everyone, but you can restrict um, this by organization units as well. Great, so I'm going back to the home screen here, and we'll continue on with our first look at the admin console. So, from the home screen, we went through apps, device management. So Google's built-in mobile device management with G Suite operates two ways. One, you can configure a device policy for employees that are using their personal devices, often called BYOD or bring your own device. And you could also implement uh, more robust management tools if you have company issued mobile devices. Um, so there's a variety of configurations that you can um, set up for managing company-owned devices or um, employees that are bringing their mobile devices. If you are a small business and have never used mobile device management before, you might want to try out of the box just enabling under setup, under mobile management, enabling this basic option here. This sets a screen policy as well as account wipe for individuals that are using um, the, any of the G Suite applications like Gmail, Calendar, Drive, Docs on their mobile device. It basically says if you're going to log in with your work account, you have to have a lock screen in place and also allow remote account wipe by the system's admin. Account wipe means you as an administrator could go in here, find their device, and remove the company data from their phone, but you do not have control over wiping their photos, for instance. You need to set that up as a company managed device. Moving on from device management, you have an entire section of the console dedicated to security. So this goes through basic settings like enforcing two-step verification. You have an entire dashboard that's been configured for you automatically to highlight common questions like how does external file sharing look within the organization or how many messages were encrypted, um, how spam filters doing, um, how many users are marking their emails as spam, so on and so forth. So definitely a pretty good tool set um, available to you um, from the Security Console. Um, some of these additional features are only available within G Suite Enterprise. Um, we do have another video dedicated to what's found in G Suite 
basic versus business versus enterprise, which I recommend you take a look at. Um, from here, you'll see security health. You could do password monitoring, um, modify how login challenges work, configure single sign-on, so on and so forth. Moving on from security, you have the support tab. So, very important, if you need to get a hold of Google G Suite support, you have to have your PIN available. So, if you are having an issue, you can simply click contact support, phone, enter your e question, and you will be given a um, support PIN, which will be valid for about 60 minutes, and then you'll have to generate a new one. So you will need that support pin in order to call G Suite support. Keep that in mind. Moving on from support, data migration. If you're moving off a system like GoDaddy or any service where you've primarily just used mail, you might be able to get away by just using the built-in data migration service to import all of your data. Um, definitely available as an option to you. Under more controls, Google by default will hide your groups. So Google Groups work a lot like distribution lists um, in other services. Um, so there's a whole range of controls you could set up for groups, but you could create them right from there. Um, admin rules allows you to drill into different types of admin settings you could apply to your users, giving someone super admin versus groups versus help desk style admin, etc. And then domains. So within domains, you can set up standalone multiple standalone domains or domain aliases. It really depends on how your organization works, but you can have a combination of multiple standalone domains where you have separate groups of users managed separately, all under one G Suite tenant, or a domain alias. We could have, in this case, Central Coast Real Estate Co. We could have property management businesses that people, users then get aliases at those different uh, domains. Great. And the last item here, rules. This is specific to G Suite Enterprise and the data loss prevention tool set, which we cover in a separate video. So that concludes our first look at the G Suite Admin Console. I encourage you to check out some of our other videos if you have more information about getting started with Google G Suite. Thank you.